Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we'll be taking a look at Sequoia 17 and how to do some beat syncing, taking a loop that is at a different tempo and making it fit to the tempo of your track and also how to do some audio warping. Uh, there's some really obvious sort of audio fixing you can do with warping. So I wanna do something just a little bit more creative uh, with it. So let's go ahead and start off with the simple job. We have here a drum loop, it's at 94 beats a minute, but the project is at 120 beats a minute. If we play it and hear that, it's too slow, it's actually supposed to be faster. This is the autoplay button, by the way, so if you have this on and click, it'll play automatically. Uh, now, if I turn on the BPM button over here, you would think it would fix it, because that's what this button's supposed to do. But if we play it, it sounds the same, nothing changed. Uh, the reason is this BPM button, only you only hear its effect when something tied to the project tempo is playing. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're playing up here in the, uh, in the play area, uh, this'll work. Or if you have the metronome on, it'll work. So if I just turn the metronome on and hit play, it works. Uh, if we have this off, you can hear the metronome doesn't line up with it anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and that is the super easy way to sync up some beats. So we'll go ahead and drag this onto our drum uh, channel here. And so now we have a drum loop. The next thing is there's another way we could sort of nudge things around. There's actually several others, but these are kind of like the ones you're gonna touch a lot of the time. Uh, so there's this way. And now let's say that I've got here uh, a, dr uh, this, a drum loop. Let's go for a bass loop. So that, you know, that's kind of cool. Let's go, let's turn off the BPM sync and let's grab this and stick it on here. And it won't be synced up at all. So, you know, it's this weird length. This is way over here. It's supposed to be over here. Just all kinds of problems, right? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a different mouse mode that'll allow us to do audio warping. And to get to this mouse mode, you can click up here on the mouse and go to pitch shift time stretch mode, or you can right click and then immediately left click, like hold them down. So right, then left, and it'll bring up the mouse modes. So we're gonna click this and that'll allow us to do it. And I'm gonna, gonna highlight this top one here. And now we are in the, oh, well, see so yeah, here I've switched up here. Let's go back over pitch shift time stretch mode. And you can see it looks like a little clock now. And I can hover over the top half of this waveform and I can place markers. Now I have a snap sitting on right now, so this is not gonna work, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unclick the snap right there so I can be a little more precise. I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift and then scroll to zoom in time. And then I can use Shift and scroll to translate on the x-axis, like back and forth. So the beginning, probably fine, but I wanna do something weird. So this is weird. Like we could use this, check this out. You, you just click and you place an audio warp marker and you can literally just scoot things around. So let's see, we want this over here at the front. So this is gonna do all kinds of things to the audio, right? It's not gonna sound like a normal bass loop anymore. But if you had a, a piece and two vocalists were singing and one was slightly off from the other, you could just do a little bit of nudging and then boom, problem fixed. So that's what this is typically used for. Uh, this is sort of like a weird, more creative use of sound design. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna work for us because uh, this is really pushing some of these things quite a ways out. Again, control shift, I'm gonna scroll out so I can just sort of see what I'm doing here. Uh, so if we just play it now. That, that's pretty cool. Uh, we could bring them in and try to do like this halfway type deal. Uh, but let's just, let's just go with this straight pattern here. That's kind of nice. And then we'll place one over here. Drag and drop. We'll pull this one out, this one out, this one out. And shift scroll to move us down the timeline. That one will get really yanked. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete the leftover stuff. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's undo that. Mine's... Um, let's see, control will uh, scale you on the y-axis, by the way. So if you hold down control and scroll, let's get rid of that one and place it more in the front. 
and zoom out a smidge. Pull this on over. Then maybe this like somewhere around the halfway point. And this is actually on the spot. I don't know what's up with that. Let's just see how the end sounds. Oh my goodness. Um, I meant to hold shift when I did that, but I only held control. Okay, so here it is. This is our um, synced up version. We'll drag our selection out, move it back to the snap so this isn't so hard to do. And here it is. <laughs> This is interesting. I'd probably try to do this twice and then do something like this, but this demonstrates the point. You can use audio warping to take loops and create something really interesting. You know what I wanna do? I wanna grab another, another loop from here and potentially mix them. I think that could work. Let's, let's turn off the metronome here. So let's try bringing this in. Let's get rid of this. This, this wasn't a cool idea. And let's see if we can get two of these ideas to work together with the audio warp capabilities. So we're still all, we're already in that mode, so we're good there. Let's add some markers in here. Pull this forward, maybe one out here so we could pull this back some. That actually might have worked pretty good. We'll pull this back out. Maybe see if we can get these middle ones to play nice here and here. This could be another terrible idea. I don't know. I'm full of them, you know. Uh, let's pull this back out. Oh, my goodness, the snap setting. I constantly click up here on accident. That's actually not bad if we get rid of this. Oops. Uh, let's leave this mouse mode for the universal one so we can just clip this off. And then this one could go down on the repeat and we'd have a much more interesting loop. But that gives you an idea of what's capable with the audio warping. It's more than just fixing takes that don't line up with each other. You can do some really cool just nudging to make some neat lines that normally wouldn't be possible or they would be a lot more of a pain to do because there'd be all this like pitch stretching and stuff you'd have to think about where here it's just super intuitive you just click and drag if you have any questions about this feel free to let me know subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day